everyone, it's Julia. I made some fabric covered journals this week. I wanted to share with you how I make these patchwork type looking covers. Really a simple way to do it. Went together really easily and I, and I hope you enjoy this. I did use the Peltex in the inside and this is the double sided Peltex. Lots of stitches and just a real fun look. I got, I believe, five of them done. These will be in my, my Etsy store. I do not have the inserts when I film this, but now I do have the inserts done, and each one does come with an insert um, that have a variety of different pages. And close with that a little elastic strap. Yeah, and this is the 72 72F Peltex, and this is the double-sided fusible Peltex. Really heavy, sturdy. Um, and I love these two sizes. This is the Traveler's Notebook size. So the Peltex actually measures 9 inches by 11 inches. And the Traveler's Notebook itself would be 5 inches by 9.5 inches when it's complete. That smaller size fits the, a 5 by 7 inch insert. And those are both my favorite types or my favorite sizes. On just to laying out my strips here, I have just a variety of scraps that I'm using. Some of these were gifted to me. I just love the Christmas colors, and this is going to be a Christmas themed little book. Now, notice when I lay these out, I do um, have an ex have the pieces extended on the edges by at least a half inch. That half inch is going to be your seam allowance, so you do need to, to extend those strips at least a half inch beyond the Peltex. This Peltex is a fusible, so once in a while I'll, I'll take my iron and I'll fuse these pieces down. But you do not want to touch your iron to this Peltex, it's real sticky. I try not to overthink this when I'm laying these pieces. But I do like to vary the widths, and I do also like to vary the um, direction that, that I'm placing them. This is a piece of parchment paper that I laid over the top just to help making sure that that iron doesn't stick to any of this Peltex. And here I go again with it. It's well used, as you can see. There's torn in half there, but it still works. I have my light pad here, and but I just I didn't end up using it. I decided to use a design in this floral designs and motifs. I love this little book, and I'll link it down below for you, as as well as all the supplies that I'm using. But I love this holly, and it it's just a Christmas holly, and I just really I really love it. This book is great because it has real simple um, outline um, flowers, and they're all they all they have their names by each one of them too which i really appreciate i'm using my heat erase pens and i'm just quickly just tracing this and i can see right through this this is just a, a natural colored muslin light enough that i can see right through it and did not need to use my light box at all just squaring that up and cutting off the excess I'm just going to be placing that on the front side of my journal. I went to my stash and got some trims and laces, and I'm going to be adding those, and I'm just using some temporary glue stick just to, to, to touch it, it, get everything down and into place. I wanted to add some stamping to this as well, and I got this piece of muslin that has been aged looking. It's I, I tea dyed it. And this Peace Joy loved um, stamp is an old stamping up stamp that I've had. And I stamped it in brown ink and this is my Tim Holtz mixed media palette and this is a permanent ink. I'm going to be just placing that on the back side and just temporary getting that down into place. Now you can you can certainly sew through this temporary glue stick without it gumming up your needles, but do want to wait for it to to dry. Added that little piece of lace trim there. And 
and I did put a piece of batting underneath that muslin. I just wanted a little bit extra stability and just to pop that off a little bit. I'm at my sewing machine now and I have my darner foot on. I'm just using brown all-purpose thread, nothing fancy for the thread. And I'm just outlining it, trying to stay on my lines, but I'm certainly not. I'm getting off, but I'm not worried about it. This pen will completely erase once it's ironed. So all those marks will be gone that I'm missing. I'm changing my thread now and I'm changing it to a creamed color to match that muslin. And I'm going to be just doing a stippling or a meander stitch on that, on that background. This really makes that design pop. And you can kind of see it there how I've how I've outlined or did that stippling and now I'm using that same cream colored thread and I am just going on each one of these little patches catching the edges I am still having my darner foot on and my feed dogs dropped so I'm doing all the movement on this but I have my zigzag stitch a viewer actually asked me if I'd ever done free motion with a zigzag and I and I had not and I'm absolutely hooked now you can travel so fast with it and it just leaves such a fun stitch nothing is perfect which is what I like and you can just go all over with it I would recommend giving it a try um, especially if you feel like you can't ever go in a straight line with your regular um, straight stitch at free motion because the zigzag you just you just don't it's just a lot of fun it has a real organic look to it I'm stamping some more I'm just have my letter stamps here and I'm stamping the word holly to go with my little holly um, decor there my maiden name actually was Hall was Holly so this has always been a, f a fun little um, thing that I like to add to my Christmas my Christmas decorations is that Christmas Holly I'm getting that pan mark removed and now I'm trimming my edges down so that they are a half inch just giving edit, getting everything squared up. I'll be adding the lining now to this little journal. I'm cutting that lining the same size as of the finished size here of my little book. And then the pocket, I'm cutting the same width, but not quite as tall. I don't want the pocket to hit in the center, and that'll make more sense when I get that elastic closure in there. I wanted to add another stamp here and this is another Christmas stamp. I believe it it says um, let's see it says may the simple joys of the season be yours. I'm just pink pink that again with my pinking shears and I'm going to be taking this to my sewing machine and sewing around that and also sewing around that pocket just to keep it into place for this next step. I have my right sides together now and I'm marking about an 8 inch opening at the bottom. You have to leave quite a big a bit of an opening for to, to turn this Peltex through. Um, and I'll be just stitching around it. Do not go through your Peltex. And I like to stitch about a six, sixteenth of an inch away from my Peltex. That gives that Peltex a, a place to lay down flat once you've turned it. You can see there I have I am using my zipper foot and then you can use whatever zip whatever foot works the best for you. I find that I can see pretty good with this and so that's the one I'm using. Just rounding those corners and just still trying to stay away approximately a sixteenth of an inch away from that edge. I do um secure my opening by back stitching. And now I am trimming those corners, not cutting into my stitching at all. And I do not trim the opening. I leave that the same um, seam allowance. 
getting my fingers in there and getting this turned. And it just takes a little bit. That Peltex is really stiff. But it lays down really nice and flat. I love the double-sided Peltex um, because it really grabs that lining. I'm just pressing everything down. Yeah, and it's going to really not only grab the lining, but also when I um, when I fold in my opening, it just really it's just a, it's wonderful. It just grabs it right here. You can see I'm just pressing it right on that Peltex. It's very easy to work with. And now it's to my sewing machine and once again going all the way around it, top stitching it and closing that opening. For the closure, I am going to be using my fabric, my heat erase fabric pens again and I'm just making little marks. A half inch in and then another half inch in, one in the center and then again a half inch in and um, another half inch in. Um, I, I do not punch through my my stitching if I can help it, but it's there's so much stitching that I'm going to be doing around these little holes that I mean if if it can't be helped that's fine too. Using my crop a dial and punching those holes, this big bite crop a dial works wonderful for that center hole. So I have a total of five holes, and this is going to be for a a single insert. And I'm to my sewing machine once again with free motion um, and my um, darner foot on. I'm just going around and around on those holes. I love the organic look of this. You can certainly put eyelets in or grommets in if you prefer. And then I just travel right on the spine of this, right through that pocket. So the pocket is now two pockets or, or a divided pocket. And again, going around and around on those little holes just to close that and just to make it more secure. I have a two millimeter cord elastic here and I measure twice the height and once the width and then add about eight or 10 inches. Fold it up to find the center and then I'm gonna tie a knot right at the width of my book. And that is what the loop that is going to go around, around my book to close it. Now I take both of those ends through that center hole and then th through the bottom to the top, again the bottom hole and then back through the top hole and then tie this in the center. And that is the, where my insert is going to be placed. I'm just going to share with you, I do have an insert that I've completed here, a journal, and just this just slides right in. And you can purchase these Traveler's Notebook inserts. Um, one does come with the, my little, my little um, journals, but they can be purchased and you can just use the cover over and over again. I'm adding some color now to my design and I'm using my, my Inktense pencils for this. And these are a watercolor pencil that has like an ink in them. They're more permanent once they're activated than regular watercolors. I am just going to be activating this with, with water. Sometimes I use fabric medium, but these aren't meant to be washed at all. And I'm adding two different colors of green and two different colors of red and a brown for the stem. And I'm not doing overthinking this is either. I'm just wanting to get some color on there and activating this with um, with water. I do use a scrubber brush. You want to use a brush that has a little bit stiffer bristles. Adding another another layer of the ink tense when it's wet, you're going to really get that that intense color. And there. 
there it is. Thank you, everybody. I'm going to add some pictures here at the end. I hope you have a chance to create. Bye for now.